Hey, I'm Brandon Lee, and in this video, I'll be taking out Sony's new A6700 camera, 70 to 200 macro lens, and ECM M1 mini shotgun mic around the streets of San Francisco. So first, I'm gonna show you the vlog with lots of sample footage and sample audio, and then I'm gonna give you my unsponsored, honest thoughts about each of these pieces of gear. So let's jump right into it. And now we're walking around the streets of San Francisco, uh, just to test stuff out and have a little fun here. Sony invited Kobe and me out to San Francisco to spend a day trying out the new gear. I haven't shot APS-C in a long time, so I had to get used to the feeling of the smaller body and the crop factor. So you see this building? I want to film just the very top of it. So because the A6700 is an APS-C camera, which means it's a crop frame, and this lens is a 70 to 200 zoom, it's effectively like having a 300 millimeter lens when I zoom all the way in on a full frame camera. One feature I like to use in these Sony cameras is slow and quick mode, which is where it records slow motion in the camera. And then when you play it back, it's already slowed down for you on the playback. So you don't have to slow it down in your editing program. It's already slowed down in the camera. So with this zoom lens, I can just zoom in on someone who's really far away walking with the new AI autofocus. It tracks really well with any subject, human or animal or whatever. San Francisco is famous for its Chinatown, so we had to get some shots there. I feel like Chinatown is the most interesting part of any city because you know when you put Chinese culture in the middle of another culture, you get an interesting and unique result each time. The big new feature of the 7200 is that it is a macro lens as well as being a traditional zoom lens. So that gave me a lot of opportunities to get close-ups where I would ordinarily be too close for the minimum focus distance. We have found fortune cookies. And that close focus came in really handy when we found a fortune cookie factory. And now I'm trying to film some close-up shots because this is macro lens. I did this shot at near macro distance at 60p. You may not be aware that there are different flavors of fortune cookies, but actually at the Golden Gate Fortune Cookie Company, you can get so many different flavors. Matcha, I don't know, whatever this is, like all sorts of crazy flavors. They also have flat fortune coins. So if cookies are boring to you and you want a different shape of the same thing, coin. Next up was the Sony Alpha community event, which was open to the public. This is the big event. So anybody could just walk in, meet some new friends and try out the gear. Your fans. Oh, you're my fans. Oh, yeah. so oh great. Thank Trying out a new lens. We got the 10 to 20 millimeter lens on the camera, and my camera's on my gimbal. So I'm going to try flying around this place and see what it's like to shoot with this really lightweight camera and a really lightweight wide angle lens. When I put that wide angle 10 to 20 lens on the A6700 and started walking around with the gimbal, I really feel like I hit my comfort zone with this camera. It's a lightweight APS-C camera, so naturally I would want to use a lightweight lens on it. I felt no strain when I was running around on my gimbal. It was really a lot of fun. Okay, now I've mounted up the ECM M1 mic on my camera, and what's special about this mic is not only is it very tiny, but also you can switch the pickup pattern. So that means if I flip around my camera, you should hear me just as clearly from behind the microphone as you do when I'm in front of the microphone. And you can change that pickup pattern. You can pick up all the way around or just the sides, just the front, which is what's really cool about it. So you're seeing how it sounds right now. Hi Brandon, nice to meet you, cool. Hey, how's it going? We have a happy unscripted studio student here. Is this a new microphone? And now we're doing a photo walk and we got some incredible light here. Next up, I went out with a group to walk around the streets again. This was a chance to try out that wide angle lens and the microphone outside. Stop caring so much. If you out here doing this in public with a camera and people are looking at you, that you're doing something awkward. Most people that are looking at you, you ain't never gonna see them again, so why care so much? So that's it for my little trip to San Francisco. Next up, I'll give you my honest thoughts about the gear that I tried out. In my film school unscripted studio, I've created a method I call Fusion. Fusion is my system for mixing together my mirrorless camera, 360 camera, action camera, and smartphone 
to create shots and scenes that would otherwise be difficult or impossible as a solo shooter. Fusion is all about learning the strengths and the weaknesses of each camera so you can dynamically switch between them as you shoot, keeping your creativity flowing. You'll see me shoot a fashion film, a travel video, a cocktail bar ad, a seamless transitions video, and a vertical video. Each Fusion lesson has an in-depth, real-world shooting tutorial, followed by an editing timeline breakdown in DaVinci Resolve. And here's the best part. You'll get a download link to my DaVinci Resolve project file and the video clips from each lesson, so you can see the edit on your own computer. And as a bonus, I'm including my Lighting in Motion lesson. This lesson is all about moving your lights for dynamic effects and mixing together different lighting sources. Have you ever put a light on a gimbal? I bet not, but you're about to learn how. You're gonna learn some techniques that I guarantee you haven't tried before. And the entire lighting kit still fits in a backpack. There's a lot to learn. Click the link in the video description and find out more about Unscripted Studio. Now I'm back home and I just wanna give you a few of my honest thoughts about the A6700 and the 7200 lens and the ECM M1 microphone. This isn't a sponsored video by Sony. You will be getting my unfiltered thoughts here, even though I only had a few hours to play with each of these pieces of gear. So let's go ahead and start out with the A6700. My overall feeling about this camera is that it is a photo camera that's also a pretty decent hybrid, but I wouldn't call it a video camera. For purely video purposes, I would still recommend going with the A7S III or the FX3 or the FX30. So before I get to what I didn't like about this camera for video, I will talk about the things I did like. It has a really sharp detailed image because it's downsampled from 6K to 4K. And I feel like the detail of the image is actually a bit better than the A7S III because it has more native pixels. Basically, you get more natural sharpness when you downsample from 6K to 4K rather than just starting out with an approximately 4K sensor. And I feel like the color was on par with the other current offerings from Sony in the Alpha line. Any of the Alpha cameras right now will intercut pretty well because they use pretty similar color science and they record to similar quality formats. Also, the camera does now have 60p and 120p built in, no firmware updates required. That's pretty cool. And of course, it's a tiny camera. It's even smaller than the FX30. When I used the combo of the A6700, the 10 to 20 millimeter lens, the ECM M1 mic, and my DJI RS3 mini gimbal, I had a vlogging setup that was super lightweight and it was really easy to carry with one hand and I just felt completely free running around with it. And the AI autofocus tracking is quite good. It's at least as good as the A7S III or the A7 IV, which are the other cameras that I frequently use. I didn't get a lot of chances to test it in really challenging environments, but the AI at least doesn't make things any worse. It's as good or better than the non-AI Sony Alpha cameras. Now let's get to the reasons why I feel like this isn't the perfect video camera and why it's more of a hybrid. First of all, rolling shutter. It does have visible rolling shutter. I noticed it pronouncedly when I was using the 70 to 200 millimeter lens, and it was significantly more than I noticed with the Sony a7S III. And of course, rolling shutter looks worse on a longer lens. So that is something you have to keep in mind. The second thing that turned me off a little bit to this camera was the crop when I was shooting in 60p or 120p. When you go to slow motion, the camera does crop in. And because you're starting with an APS-C sensor, that means that it crops into effectively like a micro four thirds sensor. And that's problematic, not only because you lose image area, but also because it magnifies the noise in your image. So even when I was outside in bright light, when I shot at 60p or 120p, in S-Log3, S Gamma 3 Cine, which is 10 bit, 422, I still noticed a pretty decent amount of image noise in the shadows, which means that I would either have to apply noise reduction to a lot of my shots, or I would have to crush the blacks of those shots. I wouldn't be able to get a nice smooth gradient in my shadows. And the final thing that turned me off a little bit to the A6700 was I noticed a temperature warning. And I got the warning when I was filming in the fortune cookie factory. So I was indoors, it was about maybe 75 degrees, 80 degrees at the hottest. And I had been in there for about 15 minutes filming in slow motion. And then the temperature warning popped up. Now I hadn't adjusted my auto temperature off settings, which means you know you can adjust what temperature threshold, it will start to give you a warning and then shut off. I hadn't adjusted that to the high setting. It was just at standard. So that could be the reason, but it was a little bit disconcerting to me because I don't wanna work with a camera that has any chance of overheating while I'm recording. The A7S III has never overheated on me when I filmed with it. So, you know, I've just gotten used to not having to worry about that. So for me, the best use case for the A6700 camera 
is on a gimbal with a very lightweight lens for vlogging with the ECM M1 mic on top of it. That combo just felt really good ergonomically and I noticed a lot less rolling shutter when I was using that wide 10 to 20 millimeter lens. Okay, let's move on to the 70 to 200 millimeter macro lens. So the really cool thing about this lens, of course, is the minimum focus distance. It's a macro lens and it's also a very compact 70 to 200. Now, I don't use 70 to 200 very often because I rarely need to go that long. And that lens on the APS-C body of the A6700 becomes very, very long. So for that reason, it's just not applicable to most of the kinds of shooting that I would do. It's also F4. So that means it's best suited to outdoor shooting or at least shooting in environments where it's not so dark. But if you happen to be shooting long range subjects in good light, and you also don't wanna pack a separate macro lens, then this lens is awesome. It's got built-in optical image stabilization, which very few of Sony's lenses have anymore, which is really great because it means you don't have to rely on IBIS all the time. And you can still use the active stabilization on top of the OSS, which gives you super powerful in-camera stabilization. Now onto the ECM M1 microphone. I was actually the most impressed by this little gadget out of all of them because of that switchable pickup pattern. I just thought it was so cool that I was able to just turn the dial on the back and choose exactly how I wanted the mic to pick up the environment around it. And I was impressed by the sound quality that came out of it, even in a noisy environment. And the killer feature of all of Sony's on-camera mics is that you don't need to plug in a cable into the camera and you also don't need a separate battery for the mic. This removes two points of failure that I would always run into when doing run and gun shooting with other microphones. The ECM M1 is what I would call a no-brainer piece of kit. It's so small, so tiny, and so highly useful that I see no reason not to have it in your kit if you have a Sony Alpha camera. Eventually you will use it and you'll appreciate the variable pickup patterns that it offers because it means that you can use it in almost any scenario. Okay, so thanks so much for watching and thank you Sony for bringing me out to this community event. I really do appreciate the fact that Sony takes care of its community and gives people a chance to meet each other. So once again, I'm Brandon Lee. I do have a film school called Unscripted Studio. Check the link in the description of this video and please click like and subscribe and that notification bell so you know the next time I post. All right, I'll see you again soon.